wine. Wine made from passata. Tomato wine. I love tomato wine I do made from fresh tomatoes every time. It's fantastic. However, up here in Edy, we don't have a greenhouse, so I can't really grow my own tomatoes just yet. It's a work in progress. Hopefully, in a few years' time, I might be able to. So I've been trying to find a decent alternative to fresh tomato wine. And I think I've nailed it. I think I've found the perfect alternative to fresh tomatoes in winemaking. Tomato wine is the type of wine that really does not taste like the raw ingredients. Tomato wine is not tomato-ish. It very much loses a load of the tomato flavour and instead mellows out into quite a unique flavour. Something I can't quite describe, but I will be doing a taste test and try and describe it better in another video. The wine made from Passata. Will it work? Come on, let's make it and find out. What we're using is four 500 gram tubs of Passata. So that's two litres worth of tomato Passata. You can use tin tomatoes. That's going to be a different recipe, and I want to do a taste test comparison between the tin tomatoes and passata. So onwards. This really is such a simple recipe. It's one of those that you can make from your store cupboard ingredients. If you just fancy making a, a gallon or two of wine, it's been a while since you made a gallon of wine and you fancy making one. Like I'm doing now. Awesome. Right then, first thing you need to do is open up your tubs gardens of Passata. Fantastic. Come on then, onwards. And then, all you really want to do, after you've opened up your Passata, is pour it into your demijohn. As easy as that. If you can try not to waste any by opening up the gardens and it goes all over the place, even better. It's hard for some people, it's hard for me, but you have to give these things a go, don't you? Right then, on with putting your passata into your demijohn. And repeat with the four 500 gram cartons. Two litres if you buy a big batch of it. Or make your own. Homemade passata is brilliant, so get that a go. Awesome. Anyway, pour all four in. Fantastic. And once you're done, add in all four of the cartons, give them a rinse under the tap and add that water as well. Get as much of that tomato flavour as you can. Waste not, want not. Awesome. With your two kilograms of passata added, you want to add some sugar. So I'm going to be dissolving a kilo and a half of granulated sugar, yay, into boiling water and add it. Because I rinsed out the tubs of passata, I have about a litre and a bit's worth of room left in the top of my demijohn. So I'm going to add sugar, a kilo and a half of sugar to a litre of water. Dissolve it well and then add it. So come on, that's the next step. You ready boy? Let's do this. Fantastic. Then we're going to pour the sugar into your saucepan. And pour over your boiling water. About a litre's worth I'm using. Pour it over, pour it over. It's hot. Oh, oh, oh. And give it a really good stir and dissolve all of that sugar. Come on, stir. Stir. Something else to add at this stage is some petzlase. It helps the tomato to break down properly and not leave a haze in your wine, so Add a teaspoon of petalase to your wine. Fantastic. And once it's all dissolved, your sugar, you want to pour that litre or so of water straight into your demijohn. Easy, fantastic, awesome stuff. And then my final, final thing I'm going to do to this wine to make it extra awesome is add some dried basil. Basil and tomato is a classic combination. The flavours work really well, and especially so in tomato wines. The tomato loses that tomato-y flavour and becomes something so unique, different, totally transformational. With a total, tra 
with a total transformation, but the basil is fantastic. Because it carries that flavour through and adds that identifiable flavour. It's like, oh, this is basil and something. But what is it? I don't know. So the basil is great at adding that recognisable flavour, isn't it? So we need to give a good shake of the dried basil into the wine. Should we do that, boy? Oh, yes. To the wine. Measurement-wise, I'm adding about a tablespoon. But I don't tend to do measurements that well, so a really good shake. Shake it in, shake it in, shake it in. Brilliant. Right then. Now it's then, give it a good stir. Or a really good shake. Just the job. Anyway, now it's time to add the yeast. I'm going to be using a sachet of Cross My Loof Instant Yeast dried yeast. But what variety, what type? They have so many options on the website. I'll put a link to some of the yeasts down below. I love their products, I do. It's what I always use, apart from generic basic yeast if I'm doing a simple wine. But they have so many varieties, so many to choose from, I do not know which I'm going to be choosing. To be honest with you, I don't think it really matters what type of yeast you use for tomato wine. I've tried a few different ones and I have noticed a big change in flavour or style of the wine. So, my helper here is going to choose one for me. Choose. Which one do you want to use? Good choice. It's a high alcohol yeast. Should work well. So now, just pour the sachet in to the liquid. And there we have it. Yeast added, ingredients added, sugar, water, passata. All we need to do now is fit an airlock, let it stand, and rack it off occasionally. And hopefully, in a few months, I'll do a taste test, and maybe a comparison between the tin tomato wine which I'm about to make, and the Passato wine. If you want to check out the tin tomato wine recipe, I'll insert the link to it up by here. And the taste test will be done soon. Have fun now.